Oh, we're live. Okay, here we go. We've been live. Right. My apologies. Was trying to find a comment there, but let's just hold it down. We'll just hold down and let people log in. Um, hopefully everybody's been. Hopefully everybody's had a great old Christmas. Um, and excited for a very eventful New Year. Maybe one a little bit better than 2020. Who knows? I mean, I guess 2020 has been good for somebody. Not sure who, but somebody. So, get yourself something. I will hold this little bit of a diddle going on here. It's not a diddle, it's threes and a six stroke roll with a quarter note pulse on the bass drum. How exciting is that? Hello, Sam. Hello. <laughs> um, so, yes. It's very hard to explain and drum. You can appreciate the difficulty of a singing drummer, except for Phil Collins, because he's absolutely, I'll make no comment. Um, so, yes, just hold it here. Get settled in. Let the rest of the drum nerds assemble. Monotony is the name of the game. That's what we want. Think about thrill. Hello, Xavier. Yes, my Christmas was great, thanks. Um, how was yours? I, uh, I hope you got some left-handed drumsticks. <laughs> oh, drummer humor. Hopefully you did have a good Christmas, though, man. Um, not sure if you got what you wanted, but hopefully you did. You're welcome. Oh, look at that. We're going on to the rack time. Over the floor time. Three minutes, that's enough of that. Oh, we've settled in now. Um, awesome. Awesome stuff. Redheads, man. I don't know if those are Evans or if they're Remo or Aquarius, maybe. But Redheads, man, really killer killer look there. That is really cool. Um, I think Thomas Lang has, has done a few things where he's got redheads. Redheads look pretty cool, man. That's solid. Um, I assume that goes to base from as well on your on your your, uh, on your batter head, but um, that's nice, man. That is really cool. Um, I was lucky enough to get. Um, did I get anything drum related from Chris from Christmas? No, I don't think I did this Christmas. This was a weird Christmas. No drum stuff to open. Um, sad, sad times. But um, right, so we've let everybody settle in. They'll join later if they're going to. Um, let's get cracking. So before we get into the meat and potatoes of this entire experience this must be addressed this is the final live lesson the final drum nerd live lesson of 2020 um i know we've only done maybe 10 because i just started this recently but it's, it's gone really really fantastic actually I've, I've been really grateful for it and i've had i've had a lot of people kind of tune in and, and i've gained subscribers from it we've had lots of nice in-depth conversations it's a little bit easier than uh than me making a video and putting stuff out and then having to hear comments and, 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 and interact that way through the comment thread. So this live lesson thing that, that, that happens is a lot easier because I can say stuff. And as you saw, I was going through my thing and I had some stuff coming down from Xavier, uh, from Sam and stuff. And so all these people can actually ask questions and we can have a conversation straight away, right off the fly. So that, that, that's really quite useful. I'm really happy for that. Um, Yes, that's true. I did get money towards a new drum kit, so I guess in an indirect way, I uh, I did get a drum thing, 
I'm just trying to narrow down the best electric kit to buy uh, for the new flat. So, um, <laughs> yes, uh, meat potatoes, and uh, and I could go for some stew right now. So somebody should start that, start that now, so so that there is food after this. Um, so again, don't want to uh, waffle on too much. We've got bar eight of page thirty-three to get into, and the additional part um, that I will do at the end, because usually there's always a rudiment or something. Um, I forget the man who said it. And that's what I was trying to find the comment at the beginning there. But he was talking about finger technique and some decent exercises on how to go about getting some finger technique to improve the speed of the fingers. Now, I'm not that kind of a person. That's not my camp. We'll get to that later. Whew, there's a lot to digest there. But um, that was about four days ago. And so I've spent a lot of my time these last four days working on fingers. As you can see, it's pretty bad. Um, but again, so we'll get into that. So before we do anything more the final announcement is i'm fortunate enough you know who you are um lady girl woman uh from germany uh manu we are gonna be doing some there's gonna be some new uh drum collaborations happening in the new year uh might be a drum battle might be a rig rundown might be a tips advice but we're gonna we're gonna link up get together it's exciting because not only have i made a community here in my opinion that everybody's respectful of I've been able to explore other drum nerd based communities. And so we're linking up and getting together. And so there might be some pretty fun stuff coming down in the new year um, with collaborations. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's all there is. So let's get right into this, uh, into this bar eight. So we're looking at the downbeat of one, the, uh, of, of three, the, uh, of three. Savage and the no, the uh of two, and then the uh of three and four. God, whew, you think I've had a lot of eggnog? So we're looking at the downbeat on one, you've got the uh of two, the uh of three, and the downbeat on four. So that pattern, if you were to clap it, would be one, two, three, four, one. Stop, Sally Scrub ahead. I took that from Mike Johnston. Uh, God, he's a great, he's a great YouTuber on the drum kit there. Check him out. But yes, um, so you, that is your ostinato pattern for the uh, for the left hand, which is just now ostinato. For anybody who's not aware, of that is just a recurring, repeating, continuous pattern. And so that's what this guy is doing. Obviously, for Xavier, that's what this, this guy is doing. So here we go. We're going to start with just the quarter note pulse on the right, and obviously we're feathering the bass drum. Can't wait to be behind the proper kit, or this will actually sound like a proper kit. But here we go. One, two, three, and four. One, up. Don't forget to be, oh, let's just get that. Don't forget, if it's not linking up in your limbs, get it going in your head so that it connects the highway because there is a highway coming through them. And so the more you say it, the more you play it. So if you're losing it, slow her down and say it when you play it because then you'll be doing both and it'll help tighten that, that, that bond up and you'll learn it a lot quicker, a lot more efficiently and a lot clearer. Cleaner. It'll be a very clean, uh, uh, clean approach, if you will, because then you'll not ever, you'll have it so tightly learned. It'll it'll just come out a lot better, a lot neater. Um, what are these What are these comments before we move on here? Uh, 
Ah, cool. See, now Xavier's made a good point there. There's a song called uh, Criminally Insane, and the speed on the ride is all about finger technique, apparently. So that's probably... Now that's... I don't know the song. I'm happy to learn it, and I'm happy to be incorrect about my, my, my next statement, but I would hazard a guess if that's not blast beats. Um, and that's into a metal genre where you're getting really... You know, that's it. That's all. That's a ball game that we can explore in a minute. So I'm going to crack on with the blue shuffle. Um, crack on with the blue shuffle now. So again, that is the first and the last of the triplet. One, two, one, three, one, four. So just cut the triplet in the middle. So uh, we are getting that emphasis on the downbeat, which is one, two, three. Four. You're gonna sound. You're gonna sound. One up, 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 up. One a two a three a four a one a two a three a four. And here we go. One up. So the good thing about that specific bar, bar eight, is that it has the blues shuffle at the end there. It also has a downbeat and it also has an upbeat, much like the rest, but some of the other ones are more downbeat with only one kind of shuffle pattern at the end of it. But this one gives you literally all three scopes of what it is that we're doing here. So that'll give you the downbeat, the up, and the uh, the, the, the blues shuffle kind of feel. And so that will link on every different part of this measure, you know, because you're going to be together, together, together. So that really does bring some level of symmetry to the whole pattern because you are playing everything together in different sections, but it's giving you that ability to get both limbs to not flam. Because if you're not meaning to flam, it's a dreadful thing. If you do mean to flam, it's a beautiful thing. Fill your boots. But don't flam if you're not supposed to flam, and don't flam if you're not meaning to. And that would be something like that. You know, nothing makes a groove fall apart quicker than an accidental flam or the lack of tightness between all limbs. So, moving on to the final section of bar 33, we are doing a jazz pattern. So, again, if you really want to look at that in a layman's way, layman's terms, You've got your quarter note with your blue shuffle at the end of it. So here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. Now, if you notice on that final bit, you've got the tricky bit of there's a diddle, not a diddle, sorry, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the, the triplet shuffle on the left hand, and there's still going to be one coming afterwards on the left or on the right hand. So they don't link up. Some of that bar does join together, but some finishes without the other. And so it can be tricky when one hand is doing something and the other one's not allowed. See, that's the flip side of this coin is you want to have the ability to have it uniform, but you also want that level of independence as well. And that's the tricky bit is you need to be able to do both of those simultaneously. Perfect. 
I say perfect, time is a very manipulative thing, but as perfect as one could get it, you know, so that you're barely able to slide a piece of paper in between those notes. So this is a big exercise. This is a tricky part of the, of the page, uh, this bar, because it does have a lot of unity, but a lot of separation and independence. So I would say work on your, your independence alongside working on your uh, togetherness. It, it's very important to do them both and uh, not ne not neglect one or the other in favor of one or the other, right? So that is bar 30, or sorry, bar eight, page 33. Don't worry, there's not 33 bars. There is only 16. Um, <laughs> yes, Sam, I guess. I think I can make sense of that incoherent uh, <laughs> load of words. Um, now on to the deep dive. Um, we could recap page 33 at the end here, but on to the recap for this one specific YouTube member. He asked me, as I said a few days ago, fine, but you, you know, you don't have any content about fingers or finger technique, and I don't know how to do that. And do you have any advice and all that kind of stuff? So, um, so I said, like, yeah, go and find another YouTube drum channel that can do it. <laughs> um, no, I didn't. No, I picked up my sticks. And I learned it and I got it on. Now, the usefulness of finger technique, in my opinion, and this is only an opinion, and so it's it's for what it's worth. Um, finger technique is useful, incredibly useful for an incredible hand 16s. So that would be either either that would be the push-pull technique. But if there's no act all consistent, then that would be definitely finger blast beats. Um, and so it's very useful for that. But again, when you're looking at getting around the kit, uh, I'll show you right now so you can see how futile it is. And this is not an exaggeration. I'm gonna try and go to that tom. You see the disconnect? Now, obviously there can be the, the ability to build that fluidity and accuracy up, but you are now making the fulcrum very exposed. Fulcrum in, in depending on the position and the grip, but usually, I tend to hang about there. And so that still will be the fulcrum when I'm on that, but your fingers are cushioned and you're almost doing a push pull, but with the wrist. So you get that strength and the stick is always in contact. Whereas with the fingers, you almost have to adopt a French tympanic grip and you need to keep your hands open to allow the fingers to pull the stick up and to give it that area to move within. Otherwise it will just be choked. And so, that makes it very exposed and vulnerable because it's very weakened to being able to move around the kit. Um, and I had a lesson with Thomas, uh, Thomas Lang, and he, I was lucky enough to do that. And he made a, a very good point, which was he always will try and make his singles come from the wrist to get more accuracy, more power. And you still get that level of speed when you incorporate the fingers and the wrist. Wow. This is a, Definite drum nerd <laughs> topic. Um, so finger technique, I would say, as explicitly finger technique. As an overall, I don't think that it has as useful of a reach. But in conjunction with the wrist, i.e. the push-pull or when you're trying to add a bit more bounce to it in the wrist, pull, wrist motion, then I would say that's, that's very useful. And so one way that you can go about uh, strengthening it is again take a metronome I hope you can see this accurately uh, this will be a very low tempo if you're just starting out mine was 70 75 BPM uh, you need to do it as slow enough for also your your stupid hand really that's you know if you don't like that being the term I apologize but I call it with loving grace my stupid hand as I'm sure a lot of people do don't forget this would be yours Xavier and um, so your finger becomes, your index finger becomes the fulcrum. And then you really want to just take all those three fingers and have them move up and down, almost like we're doing that, but reversing it. Um, and the, so obviously that's a good place to start. You want to pick a fulcrum point on the stick that would allow for that to happen most efficiently and on Vic first sticks, I don't know about Promark or, 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 or Vader, but with Vic first sticks, that's roughly around the flag that gives you the best fulcrum 
pivot point. And so you want to engage all three fingers and just start slow and just the tempo down as well on your pedal. That will also help. Uh, the next thing that you can do to improve your, your, your finger technique, but also your less dominant hand is to start the exercise with your weaker hand. And so, and not only just start it with it, but do twice as long, right? So for example, what we'll do here, So as you see, I started with my left, which is my weaker, and I also did twice as much work with that hand. So this is getting more attention while this is still being maintained. Another way to bring that up, but also bring up finger speed. Um, and the only other technique for exercise of that that I would say that I've come across, um, which I, it seems to be a common one, is you go individual fingers. And this is where it really starts to get pretty tricky. I would sooner say start with all of them so they're kind of all woken up and then start isolating because if you go when they're all quiet and asleep and they've not been used to this and you just start trying to single isolate a finger, you might not get very far. And you get frustrated and then you'll be less you'll be less off rather, right? So you start, you kind of go four, four, eight. I say eight on the pinky because that's definitely the weakest one for me. And so that gives it twice as much attention, much like giving your left, your left hand or right hand, whichever is weaker, twice as much attention in the previous exercise. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Whew, that hurts. It's not, not so much hurt as pain, but it, it, it really, you can feel your brain having to get itself into that finger and into those fingers and really making them work. And so that, that is an exercise for, head, for, for, for reference. That's about as fast as I am. And I started four days ago. That's not to say woohoo, look at me, but it's just to say that was on 15 minutes a day. That was 15 minutes a day for four days. So not a lot of time by any stretch of the imagination, but your body really does start to respond quite well with repetition. And it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be loads of repetition in terms of for time. It just needs to be consistent. So 15 minutes a day, every day is much more advantageous than an hour and a half every other week, you know, or five hours every other week. It, it won't, it, honestly, it won't feel right. And that is a valid statement. And that's a valid point. That is a good thing to address, Xavier. Um, it feels horrible. I'll be honest with you. You might come, maybe if you have similar um, kind of frustration tendencies as me, you might really want to just punch your hand and say, why are you not doing what you're supposed to be doing? You know, um, should you learn that on both hands? Uh, see, now this is the thing. If your so your stupid hand would probably be the right hand if 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 you are uh, 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 left-handed as you say you were. I would say if they're both. I mean, your right hand, your dominant hand, sorry, will, will be a little bit better off at this. But I would say do that for both of them. But I would put more focus on the less dominant hand at first. So um, for the last four days, I've been leading all my exercises with my left hand. And I feel comfortable now that it's a bit, it's very brutal still. Don't, don't, don't be, don't be fooled by any of that. You know, it is still very dreadful and way off. You know, this is still faster, but again, it's not about speed. It's about ability to turn those muscles on. So I would say always start with your less dominant. Bilateral transfer. Thank you, Morgan. Look at that. Look at that, not just a hat rack, see? That, see, and, and that's a good point. It will become easier with practice. Um, again, take it slow, really, really work on your looking at 
50, 60, 70 BPM. It, it, it'll be different for everybody, but you're really, really just trying to get in there. I started about that. And just put a metronome on and just keep focus, but try and turn your head off of the fact that it's very monotonous and not overly kind of exciting, but, but stay attentive to what you're doing. But know that you're laying the foundations and the groundwork for some future gains that are going to be incredible. Because if you want to play criminal, criminally insane, Xavier, uh, and the only way to do that is kind of finger, really knuckle down. Get 10, 15 minutes every day. Set yourself a goal. Do it. You know, 15 minutes a day is, 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 is enough for most people, and it can be managed. And, 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 and send me the progress, please. If you film yourself, send me the progress. I'm keen. You, you know, I, I would love to see, you know, your weekly or biweekly progress because uh, um, it's, it's something that's great and, and it's, it's definitely achievable. So, yes, it, um, it takes time, but that's the finger technique. I would say start with the weaker hand leading the exercise. I would say um, isolate individual fingers and I would say do twice as much time on the weaker hand than the other, bring that up. So you're working on your weak hand as well as your finger technique. I do, I'll put my email in the chat right now and anybody feel free to send um, any videos of progress or, or questions, it doesn't matter what it is, bung me an email and we can, I haven't been typing, bung me an email of anything drum related and uh, and I'll be more than happy to help out in any way possible. And if I can't, I'll do the best research I can to be able to figure that out. Um, so, there might have been one other thing. Might have been one other thing. Finger technique is crazy. Um, and I would also say work on putting them between each other. Don't, don't ignore that. Because that's obviously going to be the single stroke roll that you could then, you know start something with, start a solo with, or, or if you're in drum chord, that will really come in handy. Um, God, there was one thing. I think the finger technique, again, this is probably gonna ruffle some feathers. I think the finger technique, I figured it out. The finger technique has its drawbacks, most certainly. Um, I think if you're trying to do world's fastest uh, single stroke roll, and do all that kind of stuff, that contest, then it'll come in handy. But I think what's a more appropriate and useful uh, practice regime in terms of things that are very uncommon, I would say the most useful thing that's uncommon to practice would be leading everything with your left hand or right hand, whatever your weakest one is, but in the position of actually playing a drum beat. Um, thank you, Sam. One's... One's watermelons and one is not watermelons. One's grapefruit and one's a painting. Um, I would say a more obscure and useful practice technique would be playing things with the non-dominant hand. So for me, that would be left-handed. For a lot, it would be left, which would be bringing that. See, now you might think like, well, what's the point in practicing a basic groove that anybody, as you can see, can do? But the benefit with that and making it really feel nice and sync is I am now doing literally four times more work on my left hand than I would be if I'm doing this. So what do you think, what do you think is going to happen to my left hand over the time that I practice leading my grooves with my left hand? It's going to get four times more attention four times the love so that's really going to bring up my left hand my stupid hand will become just slightly less stupid it'll go from about a grade four level in maths to maybe a maybe a university degree it's a huge jump um but this again very unorthodox you might feel like you want to you might want to play that. Um, it, it, it gets a bit more tricky. See, obviously that is a bit that you can't go when you start to add some ghost notes in there. But just holding down a basic groove, 
nothing crazy, no fancy schmancy bass drum stuff. Just holding that groove, you get four times the attention on your silly hand, your less dominant hand, make it more dominant. You then bring up the accuracy of your overall kit playing ability. So now everything, it's then it's almost very, very, very symmetrical uh, in terms of speed, power, accuracy, fluidity. It'll help with everything around the kit because you'll be, be able to move it just like you're moving your, your more dominant hand. So... I, I mean, this has gone on for half an hour. I think part of me really wants it to go on for another half an hour just because I don't want to say goodbye to this live lesson, the final one of 2020. I mean, I think everybody's ready to say goodbye to 2020, but it's just sad that I won't see you guys for a year. Um, and obviously that's, what, only a day? But still, nonetheless. Um but thank you all genuinely. Thank you for, 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 for sticking to this and, and watching and uh, putting up with my nerdy, nerdy, dry rants. Um, but again, this, is a, this has been a fantastic opportunity. I've loved being able to make this, this channel. And I think now at the time of this, we're hitting 256 subscribers. That's a 256 community strong of drum nerd people, of people that have the similar interests that will hopefully, and has, as I've seen, come together and help each other out and, and, and support each other. And so I, I'm really, really quite happy and grateful for that. I, I, I yeah, it, it makes me feel good. It puts a smile on my face that I can, that I can help that many people and that many people can help me and everybody else. So we're all helping everybody. And I think it's wonderful. Um, well, thank you very much, Xavier. I appreciate the kind words. Um, yeah, it, it's good. And, it's good. It's good people, you know, and, and I'm, I'm happy in the new year. I can't wait to be linking up channels with some people that I've become friends with through this. Um, you know, some uh, I've got one out in Germany. There might be another one possibly coming out of France or Canada. There's a lot of fun collaborations going to be happening. And so hopefully this community can join up with some other communities and we can make a global drum nerd movement. Ah, oh, the drummers are. See, I think when they wrote the Meeks will inherit the earth i think they actually spelled that wrong they were trying to spell drums the drummers will inherit the earth so i'm really happy that we can you know push together for a common interest of just everybody improving and getting better and i'm very excited xavier please do take me up on this offer i want to see i don't know why i'm acting like a father fig father figure here um i want to see these videos i want to see this progress i want to I want to I want to see the journey. So please keep me in the loop and involved in that. I'm very excited for that. Um, I mean, unless anybody's got any pressing questions, drum related questions, anything. I, I mean, we've addressed page 33, bar eight. We've done the finger bit. So I hope I very much apologize for not remembering your name, Mr. Or Mrs. YouTube channel person who's asked about the finger thing. Express there. I hope I issue for you and at least give it some kind of clarity or uh, help on that topic. So yes, we've covered the finger technique. We've covered open hand playing for the silly hand. We've covered bar eight. You know that there's some drum channel collabs coming up in the new year. Um, Oh, that'd be crazy, eh? That would be a <laughs> that would be three point five billion drum nerd supporters. Oh my god, that would be the biggest family. Oh wow, that would be great. One day, one day. Um, yeah. So we've covered everything. I mean, all I can say is that I hope genuinely, genuinely hope everybody has a wonderful and fantastically safe. Uh, New Year's Eve and New Year. I hope everybody kicks off New Year uh, 21 with a lot more grace. And I think, again, I'm only one random dude um, in, a, in, a, in, in, a, in a house, but I would like to think that we can take what we've learned from this year, reflect quite, quite appropriately and diligently, and I would like to think that we can come out of this with a Renaissance fashion, you know, uh, a lot of things have happened that have not been great for a lot of people. And I think it would be great in, 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 in one respect that we come forward from this really, really, really 
a lot stronger. If there's anything that anybody ever wanted to do, that they go and do it, make it happen. Because I, I think we've all learned that we're not sure what could happen. So if there's anything inside you, bring it out, smash it into the world, and just move it forward and, and do something positive to help impact the world. Um, if that's write a book, write your book. If it's make a song, make your song. Do something that you that you feel you've always wanted to do. Um, this drum channel was the thing that was inside that I've always wanted to do. So definitely make 21, make 2021 your year, make it the, the best thing that you can and really push things forward. Uh, seriously, don't, don't hold back, show the greatness, show the greatness to the world. Um, and then this will just be, we'll look at 2020 as a year that helped kickstart the human race into really appreciating the little things and pushing each other forward. So definitely stay, stay happy and positive above all else, I guess. Um, you know, yeah, I, I got nothing else to say other than January 7th. This January 7th, let's all, part of this drum community, January 7th, let's all put our thoughts towards Neil Peart up in, in that drum, that drum nerd heaven, I guess. But, and, 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 and yeah, it's a sad year, but that makes the first year anniversary for the passing of the world's greatest drummer, Neil Peart. So I think if you don't hear from me before then, because of everything that we're doing here, moving and stuff. Mark January 7th on your calendar and, and put a little shout out to Neil Peart there. Definitely do something, do something special. That guy was an influence to the entire drumming community. Nobody would be anywhere where they are, in my opinion, without that man. And this channel wouldn't exist without that man. So January 7th, let's uh, do a nice cheeky paradiddle for the man, the king, the legend, the Peart, the professor. Um, as he was formerly known as. So I have nothing more to add except thank you all for making this happen. And I can't wait to see you guys and gals in the new year. And uh, yeah, it, it's going to be great. We're going to hit the ground running and I can't wait to bring a lot more stuff, a lot more craziness going on. So unless there's any pressing questions, I'll be signing off in a few seconds. So get them in while you can. If not, I hope everybody has a great new year and, uh, and, 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 and get it going. <laughs> more cheers, more beers. That's it. That's all. I'll see you next year, Xavier. <laughs>